cognitive development during middle childhood. Children between the ages of 6 and 12 years old are in middle childhood. Various topics associated with cognition will be discussed in this presentation, such as influences on school achievement. Martyrell et al. stated that deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning are associated with cognitive advances. Inductive reasoning refers to reasoning that advances from a particular observation about members of a class to a general conclusion about that class. An example of inductive reasoning would be making a conclusion that a test is easy due to the fact that quizzes are easy. Another example would be a child arguing that sea creatures know how to swim and because dolphins are sea creatures, dolphins know how to swim. Deductive reasoning refers to reasoning that advances from a general premise about something to a conclusion of its specific detail or details. For example, an individual could state that sea creatures know how to swim, therefore dolphins know how to swim because they are sea creatures. Children can automatically understand fractions by the age of four. Martorell et al. stated that children's ability to estimate increases with age. Estimations include number line estimation, computational estimation, numerosity estimation, and measurement estimation. By the age of six or seven years old, most children can count mentally. Moral reasoning comes in several stages for children. According to Martorell et al., children between the ages of two and seven are in the first stage of moral reasoning, while children between the ages of seven and 11 are in the second stage, and children between the ages of 11 and 12 are in the third stage. During the first stage of moral reasoning, most children display adamant obedience to the authority figures in their lives. In the second stage of moral reasoning, children's flexibility increase. And in the third stage of moral reasoning, children start to develop an optimal representation of integrity and justice. According to Martorell et al., the executive function refers to one's conscious control of his or her thoughts, emotions, and actions to accomplish goals or solve problems. Executive, function, executive functioning skills include organizing, planning, prioritizing, starting and focusing on tasks, regulating emotions, verbal and nonverbal work in memory, and self-motivation. The four different types of attention are selective attention, sustained attention, alternating attention, and divided attention. According to Martorell et al., selective attention refers to the ability to consciously direct attention and shut out distractions. Sustained attention refers to prolonged attention and, maintain, and maintaining focus. Alternating attention refers to the ability one has to being able to shift focus in between tasks. And divided attention refers to the ability to respond to tasks that happen at the same time, such as studying while listening to music. Memory has three phases, which include sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Bolta et al. stated that the memory, the sensory memory stage stores information for a very short period of time. Information can then be moved from the sensory memory stage to the working memory stage through aids like repetition. According to Engel et al., when one pays attention to the information in sensory memory, it is then moved into working memory. Information can last in the working memory for about 20 seconds. If one practices what, what to remember, 
in the working memory stage, he or she can use mnemonic devices to help move information into the long-term memory. Mnemonics are used to help store information. According to Martorell et al, examples of mnemonics include external memory aids, organization, elaboration, and rehearsal. Organization refers to categorizing material to be remembered. For example, if a child wants to remember that he or she has science homework, he or she can go through the list of classes such as math and English, and through the process of elimination, the child should be able to remember the classes that acquired homework and the classes that did not. Elaboration refers to making mental associations that involves what you want to remember, while rehearsal refers to keeping information in working memory through conscious repetition. Some of the scales that assess children's intelligence include the Wexler's Intelligence Scale for Children, the Otis Lennon's School Ability, Ability Test, and the Kaufman Assessment Battery for Children. According to Mortuet et al., this is an individual test that assesses the intelligence of school children. This test generates the verbal and performance scores as well as a combined score. Mortuet et al. stated that this test assesses children in groups. This group intelligence test is taken by children from kindergarten through 12th grade. As stated by Martorell et al., this test is designed to assess the intelligence of children with disabilities and also minority children. Influences on intelligence include genes and brain development and also school. The way the prefrontal cortex develops in the brain is important to differences in IQ. Other brain regions which have a strong connection to genetic influence can affect intelligence. The results of a study completed by Johnson et al. in 2009 showed that environmental influences such as school and strong education were associated with high IQ scores. While going to school is more likely to increase IQ scores, Martorell et al. stated that IQ scores drop while students are on summer vacation. Gardner's theory of eight specific forms of intelligence relies on the thought process that just because one is extremely intelligent in one area does not mean he or she will be as intelligent in other areas. Martorell et al. stated that Gardner's specific forms of intelligence include linguistic intelligence, logical mathematical intelligence, spatial intelligence, musical intelligence, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, and naturalist intelligence. It is possible for a person to have more than one type of intelligence. For example, by the grace of God, I have linguistic intelligence as well as interpersonal intelligence and intrapersonal intelligence. I love reading and writing and also getting the chance to listen to others, especially children, in order to understand their perspectives. And I'm also very much interested in how the body and mind work in the various components of the self. Now, as much as I love animals, I do not have the naturalist intelligence. Neither am I gifted with the logical mathematical intelligence, mostly due to the fact that I cannot stand statistics. It's important to study your child and find 
tools and activities that can help them nurture and strengthen their intelligences. For example, if your child loves music and he or she is constantly dancing or singing, that could mean your child has musical intelligence. Or if your child loves to cook and also loves math and science, he or she is likely to have both natural, naturalist intelligence and logical mathematical intelligence. There are various tools such as books and educational toys that can help strengthen these intelligences as well as websites made with children in mind. While it's important to focus on a child's preferred intelligences, there needs to be a balance. Just because a child is more interested in music or drama does not mean that he or she should ignore math, science, and other important subjects in school. This theory states that intelligence consists of three components. Martorell et al. stated that the elements in Sternberg's theory of intelligence are the componential element, the experiential element, and the contextual element. The componential element refers to the analytical aspect of intelligence, while the experiential element refers to the insight aspect of intelligence and the contextual element refers to the practical aspect of intelligence. Influences on achievement in school include self-efficacy beliefs, which is one's personal judgment of himself or herself in regards to how well he or she can accomplish a task. Other influences include one's gender, parenting practices, socioeconomic status, peer acceptance, class size, and internet use. Learning problems include intellectual disability, learning disorders, and ADHD. Intellectual disability involves a lack of adequate intellect and deficits in the way a child conducts himself or herself. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders stated that in order for a child to be diagnosed with this disorder, he or she must have intellectual deficits, adaptive functioning deficits, and these deficits must begin early during childhood development. Learning disorders refer to disorders that interfere with specific facets of learning. Dyslexia is a learning disorder, which is a developmental disorder that affects the way a child reads. According to Peritz and Choi, attention deficit hyperactive disorder refers to a, a disorder that affects the way a child behaves and also their attention span. Specific symptoms of this disorder include persistent inattention and distractibility, and or consistent hyperactive, hyperactivity and impulsivity. According to Martorell et al., the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act is a law that ensures specific educational guides for children with learning disabilities. This law makes it possible for children with learning disorders and disabilities to get an individualized and free education in order for them to get sufficient education. According to Martorell et al., gifted children have high general intelligence, which is proven by an IQ score of 130 or higher. Causes of giftedness in children include a strong intrinsic motivation, an enriched family environment, and years of meticulous training. Thank you so much for your time today. Here are the references for the information used in this presentation.